business love the fact that basketball has a clock. Yeah. You know, when that thing hits zero and it's a two hour and 10 minute broadcast and you're in your car heading home at 9.30 at night, that's really good. I have four children. Uh, it's great to get home and see them sometimes before they go to bed or before I'm too tired to uh, be functional the next morning. Uh, baseball is very different. Uh, you're talking about three hour games. You're talking about every day. Uh, I think that's why, with all due respect to our friends who play basketball or hockey, that uh, professional baseball is the most difficult sport to play. It's 162 games in six months with 20 days off. 20 days off in six months. And that doesn't count spring training, which is also 30 days with one day off. Uh, you think about guys fouling 95 mile an hour fastballs off their toes, off their insteps, off their legs, getting hit in the hand with pitched baseballs, bad hops to him in the nose, catchers getting hit in the nether regions and have to keep playing. Um, nether regions. It's, it's, <laughs> very discreet, yes, very good. Thank you. Um, it's, it's really remarkable that these guys can do what they do day after day after day. And uh, that to me is the biggest difference as far as the sport itself is concerned. As far as broadcasting, um, baseball, I think, is, is different on TV than anything else. And, and I think it's a radio game. You know, how many of you grew up with the transistor radio and the like, backyard barbecue and watching the guys, or listening to the guys play, and you form these mental images in your head? Um, television's very different. In many ways, as a broadcaster, it's handicapping. Pictures are there. Uh, I don't need to say, hey, he hits a two hop ground ball to Dan Ugla, two steps to his right, picks it up and throws it first. I say, ground ball to second. Two out. <laughs> it pays great, but, you know, but you know there are times where, where you really want to be creative and you want to really be able to use the language to your advantage, and that's where the Jack Bucks and my grandfather, I guess, and Vin Scully, who's still the most remarkable broadcaster anybody's ever heard, had this unbelievable way of turning a phrase, pulling out Shakespeare or Limp Biscuit, and to get relevant to a major league game, uh, it's, it's, it really is an art form, and uh, the guys that can do it well like that are, are people I really admire. Yeah. Really paint a picture. Yeah, very much so. Now, when, when you're with the magic, you comes to sports is, everybody's fixated on how much guys make. And as you said, they tie their performance to that dollar figure, and they say, well, how can I, and my grandfather said, how can a guy making $50,000 a game drop a pop-up? Well, they're human beings with all the human failings that we have, but we as a society idolize our athletes. Why that is, I don't know. Um, my theory is that we are living vicariously through them. I mean, who in this audience would love to be Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie or Alex Rodriguez or Albert Pujols or any great at LeBron James and have that kind of talent and that kind of skill? Um, I see nothing wrong from a faith standpoint that a player tries to earn whatever they possibly can. As you know, here you are in the prime of your life, your basketball days are over. Yeah. If your entire life was wrapped around being a basketball guy, mm -hmm. you would have 40 or 50 very miserable years because you're not prepared to take that step beyond yeah. the sports world. Um, Albert Pujols, uh, you mentioned his name. Uh, he's been paid hundreds of millions of dollars. He's going to go to the Hall of Fame. He's one of the great players in the world but he doesn't talk about what no one else talks about are the charitable endeavors that he uh, takes part in. Albert's married to a, a lady that he met in Kansas City. She was married before. Um, she, she had a child with Down syndrome. Uh, Albert Pujols married her, adopted this girl as his own, has an unbelievable charity foundation that helps try to find cures and lifestyle opportunities for people with Down syndrome. They have since had more children and there are no issues, thankfully. But this is a man who I think embodies and personifies the, the great slogan of the state in which I was born, Missouri, the show me state. Yeah. Um, he doesn't just talk about doing the right thing, he does the right yeah. thing. And, and I think sports is no different, I, I, think, I should say, I think sports mirrors the rest of life, Keith. If all of us would simply try to do the right thing, mm -hmm. instead of the easy thing, instead of the, well, maybe it's right because of this or this or this, um, the world, I think, would be a whole lot better place, the same in sports. If players are accountable and, and say, Coach, I messed up, well, you know, because you messed up a lot. Um, <laughs> just kidding. No, uh, listen, let's be clear. I was never on the court. Well, I was on the bench. i got to tell you. <laughs> it's, it's pretty hard to mess up over there. My greatest, <laughs> my greatest lesson in faith was watching Keith try to defend Shaquille O'Neal. I was playing with him to kill. Um, but, but, Thank you. 
<laughs> but I will say this, Shaq always said this guy played him tougher than anybody he ever played him on the floor or in practice. And he was, I, I gotta tell you, this guy had the courage of a lion. You were toe to toe or nose to shoulder blades with Shaquille day after day after day in practice and this guy never backed down. That was really- I still have bruises. I would imagine. It's, it's the biggest human being I've ever seen. Um, but again, if, if I think,